back in the summer of last year, and Chris uh, was introduced to me by my daughter, who is a traveling nurse. And we were going up to Alaska, and she said, you got to meet this guy. I met him on the Kenai River, and we were floating down the river, uh, river rafting, and he's videotaping a guitarist who's going down the river at the same time. And he said, she said he's got like 25 or 30,000 YouTube subscribers. Well, as a marketing professor, we are stunned by that amount, the number of people there. And I said, I would love to meet him. So we get to Seward, Alaska now. Anybody been to Seward, Alaska? A few of you have, okay? It's a very beautiful place. It's, it's right on the coast, and it has these big mountains called Mount Marathon, which is right behind it, which you actually run up the mountains during the, the summer over July the 4th. And it's beautiful with the Kenai Fords Glacier National Park, which is right to the south. And so I go and meet him and they're in a class A motorhome. And fundamentally, he's telling me about his lifestyle. Chris and G are what we would call digital marketing entrepreneurs. He graduated from ISU in 2008. I won't steal all of his thunder. But fundamentally what he did was he chose to say, I'm going to travel and try to figure out a way of living and making a living at it. And so what happened was I formed a Basecamp team, which is Basecamp's a project management software. And Chris was on it, Ishan Badera, who is the director of the student marketing company back there, and I would call one of the finest social media uh, technicians, skilled professionals we have on campus. Uh, it was in the background, along with Dr. McKeska and Dr. Bomick, and we're all communicating, because we're trying to help Chris, but we're also trying to learn from Chris and what he's doing, because it is not very easy going from just a few hundred people on YouTube to 48,500, I think, as we checked yesterday, yeah. I believe. And so what it comes down to is we've been working with them, and amazingly, we were able to really help them in a lot of ways. And so we're very, very proud of that. He's also taught us a bunch of things about what he does and, and how he's doing it. So in essence, what happens <coughs> is you have digital marketing entrepreneurs in front of you. These people are literally going out, traveling around the country, going to <coughs> national parks, beautiful places, and they're making a living at it. When I was growing up, I traveled around this country, but I could never figure out how to make a living at it being on the road. And that's what's wonderful about the digital marketing tools that you currently have. You live in a very exciting and fascinating time because of these digital marketing tools that are available. So without further ado, I'd like a warm welcome for Chris Penn and Gina. Thank you, everybody. So I, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming in today, those that were uh, here yesterday, and also those that came in today, this lovely Indiana weather. I walked to class just like you did, so I appreciate you all um, being here today. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about today is uh, just if you take one thing from this presentation today, one thing at all, it's not about the digital market. You might know everything that I'm going to tell you. You might already have a plan in your head. It's something that you plan on doing. But what I want to you know, remind you, and this is something that started my philosophy on traveling and uh, just kind of the way that I view things, is that everybody thinks they have all this time in the world to do what they want to do. But if the average age in this class is 21, then you only have 20,000 days left in your life to do what you want to do. And that doesn't include your senior years when you're not able to go out and do what you want to do. So if you're in a major right now, or if you're doing something because your parents want you to get done with something, or you feel like it's a societal expectation to do what you're doing right now, then you need a little slap. You need to wake up, because the fact of the matter is you don't have that much time to do what you want to do in life. Every day that you wait to do what you want to do, that's a day late that you're not able to do anything in the future because you're more free right now than you'll ever be in your entire life. And think about that. Like literally tomorrow, you're less free to do what you want to do. So it's very interesting for all of you and something that, that I've found out is we have all marketing majors, graphic design, is that pretty much the consensus of this room right now? Because if that's your major, then you are free to travel the world. You can live from your laptop. When we went to Thailand, we were living on about $40 a day. And that includes a bungalow on the beach. That includes our moped rental. That includes three meals that we ate out every day. And we were living on, a, on an island on the beach. And you can work remotely 
from your computer and make $300, $400 a day. So you can pay, like put money back and travel the world. So just if you take one thing from this presentation, I want that to be the one thing you take away for sure. And if you gather some other things along the way, cool. But on a lighter note, so as you can see here, this is uh, G and I, the lovely Miss G in the, uh, in the back, short for, uh, for Gina. Uh, we travel in this Class A uh, motorhome that we call Atlas. We spend our summers up in Alaska, like you just heard, and then the lower 48, uh, we just kind of bounce around. This upcoming fall, we're transitioning into uh, full-time work um, through our digital marketing, through our work with companies. They've offered us the opportunity to take their gear, go from RV show to RV show around the country and sell their gear. So now we're, we went from the Alaska work. So in Alaska, we had to have a job because we were at a tipping point. We were spending more um, than we were actually bringing in. So we had to go to Alaska. We'd work the tourist season and make a lot of money and then live off the YouTube channel after that. So we'd have a supplemental income and then use our money from the summers to you know, kind of break even for the year. And right now, we just barely are making a little bit more money than we're spending. So we're at this very awesome tipping point. It's very exciting for us. Um, the presentation today will be a little bit different for those that were here yesterday because it'll be a little bit more about um, how I got started in travel, how I went from you know, not really traveling at all to uh, you know, just living full time out of an RV. But what I'm gonna do right now is uh, show you a quick video. Uh, the video I'm gonna show you is when we first got the motorhome. Uh, my personality is just jump into stuff and see what happens. I don't really think about it too much. It's like if I wanna do it, then I'm gonna do it because it's something inside me told me to do it and then I'm gonna figure it out after. So we get this motorhome and we're in Louisiana at this point. We went from Indiana down south because it was warmer and then we decided to take the scenic route and all of a sudden we got um, on this detour and we had to take this back road and all of a sudden this bridge comes up and we're not exactly sure how tall our RV is but we know the clearance on the bridge is 13, uh, 13 feet, nine inches. So we'll show you this video real quick. This is just a little snippet from, uh, from our travels. So that's the basis of the channel right there. It's just our misadventures traveling around in this, uh, this Class A motorhome. Because I really didn't know anything about this thing when I first got it. I had no idea how it worked. We kind of learned along the road. Remember our first campsite, we actually stopped and figured things out. I sat outside for about an hour looking at the manual, trying to figure out how to turn things on, how to turn things off. We were a little stressed that day, but we, we got it figured out. But now we, you know, we're, we're going along with it and it's really helping out the channel. It's helping on our digital marketing. But uh, we'll take a step back here, and this is my hometown of Montezuma, Indiana. And I don't know if many of you are from small towns. This is a metropolis of about a thousand people. We have a caution light and you know about five churches in town, and that's about it. But there's some things that I picked up from this small town that helped me be the person I am, the person that's just like, hey, let's, let's go for it. If I wanna do it, then let's make it happen. So at the age of nine, I was adopted by my grandparents. I was living in you know, conditions that weren't really that good for anybody. And I remember some of my earliest memories are from that time. And from that, I got the, the impression or the idea that positivity can get you through anything. Like I went from a very bad situation to a good situation. And that, you know, that kind of put inside me this, this reality that when you're positive, no matter what happens, it's gonna be better as long as you stay positive. If you go negative, if you start going down that road, then you're not gonna get anywhere. Like you always have to be positive. Also, it gave me the, uh, the hard work ethic. So these, uh, these fields right here, I worked on farms from the age of like nine to, I guess my freshman year of college, I still came back and helped out a farmer that I worked for. And belling hay and detasseling corn will definitely instill a work ethic, especially when I think from you know, the younger ages, I was making $4 an hour, you know, and then it went up from there. So I got a, a good work ethic from, uh, from this small town. 
And then uh, things progressed. Uh, this is a, a picture from my first, uh, my first rubber tramping experience, as they call it, traveling around in a vehicle. And this came about because while I was at ISU, after I graduated from my small town high school and went to ISU, which is only about 30 miles up north, I started to get this feeling towards the end of my freshman year that I really wanted to get out and see what was out there. Um, the best way for me to do that was, in my mind, was studying abroad. I was actually walking to my Communications 101 class, and it was a lovely day like we have outside, nice and, nice and toasty out there. And I sat down, and there was a flyer for studying abroad in Australia, and I was like, man, that place sounds pretty warm. So I went to Janice Halperin's office, and then I applied, and I had a two-week window to apply and get accepted. I got accepted right towards the end, and I went to Australia. Two major things happened in Australia. Um, the number one thing that happened when I started to go to Australia, I bought a whole new outfit, a bunch of new clothes. I had two rolly bags, giant bags, and a backpack. I paid for extra baggage. I brought everything. I brought my Xbox. I brought literally everything that I thought would, you know, I'd need for Australia, which I really didn't. And I was rolling through in this, this scruffy guy with one backpack. He, was, he had a big beard. He just smelled horrible. He walked by me, and I just looked back at him. I was like, man, what's, what's wrong with that guy? Like, what, what is going on with him? Like, he needs, he needs some class going on in his life. And uh, fast forward to six months later, I went to school for four months, and then I scheduled my flight to leave um, two months after that. So I did a total of six months in Australia. So I was backpacking around, and I met some Australian friends, and then we went on a, a camping trip right before I boarded my plane back, so I hadn't showered for like three days. I had given away all my stuff, sold my Xbox. I, I got a backpack from my British friend, one backpacker's backpack, and that's all I had with me. So I'm walking through the airport back at LAX, and I smell horrible. And I literally saw people like doing like one of these, like kind of looking around to see what the smell was. And it was me, because I was just like this, this dirtbag traveler now. And I literally left one person and came back another. That was a big thing that happened in Australia. And I remember it very clearly. I was reading Black Hawk Down. It was around 2.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep on the train. And uh, I was sitting there, and I heard something on the side of the train next to me. It sounded like a, uh, like a bolt hitting the side. It was like tinging down the side of the train. And I was like, man, that's really weird. And the brakes went on really quick. Everybody kind of jolted up and started looking around. And my friend looked at me, and he asked me what was going on. I was like, I don't know, man. I heard something on the outside. And I thought something happened with the train. I thought it was broke down. And then the announcer came on and said that, uh, that we'd actually hit somebody. And I found out later that somebody stepped out in front of the train and committed suicide. Um, and what we heard was him hitting the side of the train. It was like his body parts hitting the train. And I was just like, holy crap, I, I couldn't sleep. Um, they had to stop the train, the bus came and got us, and we were going into Melbourne, Australia. And I remember it was rush hour during the morning, and I was on this bus just like kind of, I hadn't slept, I'm kind of out of it. And I started looking at the people in the cars going to work. They just had this look on their face like they were just out of it. Like they were just in this little zombie mode. And I was just looking at him, and I remember very clearly there was a blonde woman with blue eyes and a ponytail, and just a look on her face. I, at that moment, and people can look back at their lives and see moments like just like that that really change their perspective and the way they view things. That was a big one for me. It's like, I am never going to do that. I'm not going to be a person that's doing something they hate, like working a job they hate to buy things they don't need. So Australia was a big uh, turning point for me. And then after I graduated, oops. Must have pressed the button, sorry. Um, after I graduated, um, I bought this van on eBay for 1800 bucks. had 180,000 miles on it. Um, I actually won the auction over in the, uh, in the packaging lab over there at the School of Technology. Um, I almost fell over backwards out of my seat. I was so excited when I finally won it. And then I, uh, I took out all the seats. I put the bed back, put a futon mattress, built some cabinets, and threw a bunch of food in there and drove around with my dog for a month and a half. And that was... The reason why I did that was, is because you can travel very cheaply in a vehicle. You pay for your gas, you can buy cheap food, and you don't pay for anywhere to stay. I was staying in Walmart parking lots, I was staying in, you know, anywhere. I was staying in, in town, in, you know, neighborhoods, because you're in a van, nobody's really gonna uh, mess with you. And that was the first time that I actually had a, the, the realization that I could go out there and travel and do it cheaply and see a lot of the world. 